can see, I'm currently stood in the top right corner of the Galactica car park, which I gave over to you guys to create. Alton Towers' next coaster. I did a competition previously at Thorpe Park on the back of Swarm Island, and this time I went and made my own coaster. Now we're here looking at the results of the Alton Towers' next coaster challenge, and there were over 100 submissions, which is still crazy to me. So thank you so much to everyone who got involved. I'm just hoping I can get this video out somewhat soon after the deadline. And of course, this video is the Alton Towers Planet Coaster Competition results. So here is how the video will be laid out. So as mentioned in the start screen, this will only cover the top 15 submissions ranked by me, and uh, I had a bit of help from some of my mates. The bottom five of the top 15 will receive 10 to 20 seconds of coverage, including a small area overview and a snippet of the coaster POV. Shortly after that, we will reach the top 10, where the bottom five of that top 10 will get 30 to 40 seconds of coverage with a bigger portion of a POV shown and more of an area overview. And of course, the top five, they will be showcased with a full walkthrough and I'll show as much as I can and a full POV as well. If you didn't reach the top 15, I sincerely apologize. I looked through every single one that was sent in and narrowing it down to 15 was incredibly hard because so many of them were so good. But thank you for the support and thank you for taking part. So I think it's time we begin the top 15. At number 15, we have Bandit by Journal of Flip. This is the world's first double launch wing coaster, and it's based in a town called Sonora. This has some really good elements, even going through the last turnaround of Galactica. And also, it looks great with all the theming. At number 14, we have Spatium or Spatium by J. Andrew. 1335. This is a Mac multi launch style ride with a 70 miles an hour max speed, four inversions, and a really cool looking space junkyard theme. At number 13, we have Icarus by Thrillverse. This is a Vacoma launched flying coaster, and it would be the longest in the world of its kind. You fly through various different inversions and cool elements, along with flying around this huge town called Ironmere, which does look really cool. At number 12, we have the Temple of Quetzal by Daniel. This is the world's fastest and longest multi-launch coaster with the most airtime moments on a steel coaster in the world. With a ton of near misses and a huge amount of theming throughout the ride, it looks really good. At number 11, we have Rapid Ez by Theme Parks Direct. I apologize for the lack of footage on this one because the amount of theming killed my PC. The sheer amount of lighting and just buildings and everything like that around this ride is incredible. And not only that, the coaster itself has 10 inversions. And of course, we've reached the top 10. So there'll be 30 to 40 seconds of footage for each one from now. Apocanasia, I believe it's pronounced, by Swazzy. This is the world's first B&M surf coaster. The ride itself has some really good elements, some really good inversions, and also is incredibly smooth, whilst being in a really nice themed area. It's got two flat rides and even an indoor scare maze. The two flat rides are put into the area really well alongside the coaster because, well, one of them, the coaster literally wraps straight around it underneath it. The area also has a really good in-depth storyline, so if you want to go check that out, Link in the description to all of the creations. At number nine, we have Jaguar by Roasty05. This is the UK's first triple launch roller coaster, and it holds the most airtime on any coaster in the UK. The ride itself is surrounded by loads of stone and rock buildings, and on the POV, it is incredibly smooth. Its fast pace has a load of different elements, and the storyline backs the theme of the area really well, it being based on the discovery of the sacred Jaguar Temple. At number eight, we have Weapon One by Pluto. This coaster is based on the B&M Surf model and features the UK's first airtime launch. The area itself is really well themed along with the station and queue line for the ride. And the ride itself, as much as it doesn't have as much theming, it is very realistic. It's definitely something you could see towers building. And the storyline is based on the phalanx, which is of course what Nemesis and Nemesis Subterra somewhat linked to, making it a really nice fit for Forbidden Valley and Alton Towers. At number seven, we actually have a console edition build called Warrior. This is a next-gen Vacoma inverted coaster, and this looks really good. If you weren't aware, console players could get involved with this challenge as long as they built in the same plot of land as on the PC version. And this suspended thrill coaster looks great. It has two inversions and it's whippy, it's fast, it has a good pace to it, and the theming around it, as much as it is a lot of just trees and bushes, 
seems very realistic again. The station building and queue line looks so well put together with that terrain and it's even got two flat rides. At number six, we have Zenshi by Sausage. This is a launched B&M wing coaster with the steepest drop on any B&M roller coaster. The ride has a really cool top hat element straight after that launch, and the rest of it is filled with some really good elements. And the area as a whole looks amazing from when you enter, when you see the different fountains and statues everywhere. There's also a flat ride in the form of Samarak's Revenge, which is a ripsaw clone, basically. As said with number seven, these were so close to making it into the top five. At number five, we have Creature Soar into the Unknown by Demo Dex. This actually looks really good. Oh, perfect timing. There it goes. Uh, as you can see, really unique drop for a B&M wing coaster, which is the coaster type it is. Down. There's, pe there's people in my way. Into that really cool near miss element around there. That custom supporting looks great, rounding into some more elements and obviously round the back round there. But um, as you can see, it does look very cool, especially that lift hill and then uh, the near miss down here, which this whole storyline is about a medieval village. And uh, whilst attempting to rebuild this town, a, a monster basically came from underground. And I guess that's the monster there. And over here as well, there's actually a scare zone, um, which has... His very own scare maze in it. Uh, the scare maze doesn't actually have anything inside, but obviously, well, theoretically, they would make that for Scarefest. There's a little, like, climbing playground over here, which I don't think I've ever seen in this game before, really. <laughs> it just looks really cool. You've got some buildings around here, so toilets and uh, a gift shop. And then, the entrance for Creature. As we go through the queue line and make our way to the station building, this reminds me of, um... The swarm a little bit with a load of netting. We will take a ride on it. As you can see, ascending the lift hill right now with the custom supports. This drop actually really intrigues me because I think that would be really cool on the back row. I think it's it's very unique. Very unique. Through the near miss, that's really cool. And the coaster itself is really smooth as well. Slowed down a bit through that corner, but it picks it back up. Down under some near misses. Swooping past the water onto land, and then we move into that inversion. Quite a good speed there. Round into an inversion here. Into a mid course, which, let's be honest, most wing coasters have, especially Swarm's random one at the end. And then into the brake run. Now, as you can see, it's not the longest ride in the world. It's not It's not the fastest, not the tallest, not the steepest. But what it does do is it utilizes its layout very well. And it goes around all that theming, the trees, the bushes, all that kind of stuff. All custom supported with a really good station building. And I do quite like it. At number four, we have Wraith by Adrenaline Force. And uh, we enter the area here. Great Valley. A uh, nice little medieval castle entrance here. Some toilets. Uh, a nice little viewing platform of a little water coaster that's not really a water coaster because it's also a single rail but an infinity train and not an in um, entering under the gates into the main area we've got a nice seating area over here and a stage and uh, to our left we actually have a little ride in here this is called dungeon escape we're not actually going to take a ride on it because it isn't the main ride in the park um, but as you can see it's quite cool to see an indoor coaster that's been built too. We've also got a flat ride over here called Trebuchet, which uh, has some logs as supports, which I think that's a really cool theming piece. And uh, you've probably noticed already, this purple coaster going over the top of us is Wraith. And here we are at the entrance to Wraith. Round goes the coaster. Uh, we've got this nice skull rock face up there. Um, I wish I could turn the textures up, but again, if I go into another park, my PC will die. Here we go. Zero minute queue. That's nice to hear. Uh, through the main queue. That's not normal for towers, though, to be fair. Here we go for a ride on Wraith. Oh, it's sunny turn today. A little outer bank at the start. We've got some music playing as well. And into the smoke with the first launch. And it's relatively smooth as well. Dipping down. Nice airtime hill there. Under the water. That's really cool. Little outer bank there. More airtime hills. It's a really fast layout, and uh, it's quite whippy as well. That definitely was a whippy inversion. Round, and I believe we're going to enter the second launch. There we go. 
Some fire to the side. Curve up to the right. Oh my god, that was a fast one. But as you can see, it goes through the whole area. Cutting left, cutting right. Airtime hills, inversions. Oh my god, that was insane. Fountains. A helix there. Through the rocks. And into the brake run. That was really good. And as you can see, there's a transfer trap to the right as well. We've got a nice little... Uh, I, I, I think you, there's a little show on this, no? Well, some theming anyway. And yeah, there's just so much to this area that's not just Wraith. And uh, the fact Wraith itself actually goes through the majority of the area itself, as you can see, covers quite a big space, is really cool. And the coaster itself is amazing as well. At number three, we have Adventure Kingdom by Thrill Riders. As you can see, this is the, uh, the lovely entranceway uh, into the area. And uh, to our left, we've actually got a security bag check because obviously this is usually an entrance to the park so that would become one if we go into here we have the information board on where all of the different rides and coasters are uh, there are actually three coasters in this park uh scorpion is over that way uh wild mine is over there on top of that little sign there and the main one is katanga which is this water coaster here which it does look like a log flume but it is actually the water coaster type ride. And uh, you can probably tell where this is inspired by is, of course, Chapas at Fantasialand. So this area over here looks amazing. Uh, you've got a seating area up there, some sort of restaurant. And then, oh, there you go, just went up. Uh, a shuttle inverted launch coaster, which runs back there. But the main ride, of course, is Katanga, which is this ride here. And into the station where we get batched and uh, we head on to the ride. I think this is actually the first one I'm doing in seat view because, well, it works with a log flume. Uh, but here we go. Got some uh, nice theme in there. And then we ascend our first lift hill as it turns today. And uh, here we go. Felt like because there's a lot of rocks on this one and my PC could handle it, I did turn up the texture quality on this one. So uh, hopefully it's a bit better. Now we've got some vines around there. And then, is this the first drop? I believe it is. Way and splash down. There we go. Really nicely lit in here. Oh, okay. I thought we'd about to get splashed by that boat then. That, oh, God. What if that happens? It's going to do a Tatuki splash. Okay, no. We should be fine. And where are we now? There you go. That is the coaster there. Um, the inverted shuttle coaster. Oh, we just got splashed. And we're going into another drop, I believe. Here we go. Hey! Oh, it's a double down! And we got a photo taken! Whoa, there we go. Got some water jets shooting at us. Round right near Galactica. That is a really good... And look, the coaster there runs right by it as well. That's a really good interaction point. Ascending our third lift hill, I believe. Oh my... Okay, that's creepy. <laughs> Into another drop. Whoa. They're searching for something there, clearly. Oh, it's the party! Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Obviously, if you're not aware, there's a uh, there's a disco scene in Chapas, and that is pretty much a perfect recreation of it. Oh my god, that's brilliant. We ascend another lift hill here. Again, with the realism of the life rings. Over some water jets. Oh, lag. And I'm assuming this is the final drop. As we look over the part one more time, down we go. Oh, now that was, that was really good. I rate that highly. That was very good. So yeah, as with all these parks, I have still considered the fact that there are other coasters in the park, such as Scorpion over there. And uh, is it Miss? No, I almost call it Mystery Mine, Wild Mine over here, which are both really good attractions in this park too. Um, but yeah, Katanga, a very, very good water coaster slash log flume. At number two, we have Soul by Coaster Waffle. And as you can see, we are here in a very laggy park. There it goes. Over the top of the path. Well, this one. Oh, perfect timing. Let's go. As you can see here, the main sign for Soul, although the entrance is 
over this way. As you can see, I'm probably not doing this justice, but there is theming literally everywhere. Rock work, you name it, it it's here pretty much. I can't, I can't even keep an eye on the ride. We've got the round table over here, which I'm not sure what this is. Oh, going over the top there. Um... Oh, okay. I'm guessing this is a uh, a restaurant style area, but honestly, this looks insane. Just the way the coaster just goes so fast round, and it it reminds me a lot of Taron, to be fair. But without further ado, we will uh, enter Soul's entrance. This looks really cool here. Oh my god, the dueling aspect of that. We're walking under the sword, uh, and we've got an entrance sign and an exit right there. Um, Literally everything has been thought about. You've got the queue time, you've got the test seat, everything. We come down here, look at the smoke, further into the queue. And honestly, the way that bit wraps around that bridge, which I can assume is the exit or part of the queue, that is mental. There it goes. Wow, that, that was cool. And then the station here looks mad. Oh, oh my god. We go along some straight track here. Down to the left. There's those frames dropping. And we go into our first little launch. Oh, we stopped. That was a weird element. That was cool. Oh, I hate how laggy it is. My computer's terrible. Into the smoke, round little overbank, and into the second launch. Oh my god, that's fast. Oh wow. Over the airtime hill, round. Overbank, over another overbank. Oh my god, upside down airtime. Round and into the brakes. That was fast paced. But yes, this ride is insane. And I'm really annoyed that my PC can't run it without lagging every two seconds. But I wish it could. Because this is just, this is mad. So we have reached first place. Now, as I said over on Twitter and Instagram, the winner will receive a digital t-shirt, colour of their choice, and also £20 to spend at either the Thought Park or the Alton Towers online shop. And as I've said multiple times throughout this video, it was incredibly hard to rank this top 15 and to choose the winner was also incredibly difficult. But this creation, what I'm about to show you, is insane. So to finish off, at number one, we have Nemesis Spawn by Dan Thorpe. This ride looks insane. As you can see, it is a Mac Extreme spinning coaster with loads of different inversions, little airtime moments as well as it comes round into that hill there. And just this entrance sign alone looks mad. If we come over to the left of the entrance to the area, you can see even more of the coaster. The hang time on that inversion would be insane all the way down into that loop there. Uh, and to our left, we actually have Ripsaw's Revenge, I believe it is called. There you go. It's got its own little custom supporting on the side with the drill-esque thing in the middle. And if we take a walk to the right, as you can see, the station building over there, uh, another coaster that's based on the Phalanx. Again, uh, being kind of linked with Nemesis and Nemesis Subterra, hence the name Nemesis Spawn. And uh, over here, we've even got... Hold on a sec even got this huge tank which has just been entwined with this monster. I just love how well themed this is whilst keeping it all realistic in the whole area and the coaster itself and um, if you aren't aware I believe this is the same person who made Swarm Symbiosis in the last challenge which was very highly rated so um, your planet coaster skills are mad. <laughs> so then we take a walk to the entrance of Nemesis spawn over here and we go in as you can see we've got rocks in the queue where the monsters kind of entangled them as well pieces of track oh my god that's amazing you get some really nice views off the ride from the queue line that is quite a unique inversion there um, more track pieces 
a little bit of a lake down there as well. Some containers around here, more rocks. Um, we make our way past where the brake run is of the ride uh, towards Galactica, which has even been themed up as well a little bit. And we make our way down to part of the indoor queue, lights off while inside. Here we go, we go through. This looks mad. Oh, there's even a strobe room. It's like a little mini scare maze in here. We head through. Oh my god, this is mad. It genuinely feels like some sort of scare maze. And then we make our way into the station as well, Jesus. Yeah, this is this is insane. And we're taking our first ride on Nemesis Spawn. I'm going to do the seated POV as the main screen. And in the bottom right, you can see a track POV. Um, but here we go. A very quick lift hill. Of course, not very tall. And the colour change as well to go with the tree line. Go over into our first inversion. A load of hang time there. Down. That lake is custom, pretty much. Immelman stall. Over a hill. This has some great pace to it. And Planet Coaster physics are usually terrible with spinning coasters. And literally the spinning is perfect on it. So, great job. Round again. Into a barrel roll. That's the outer bank stall twist, I believe. Round and into the brake run. Again, like some of them, not the longest run in the world, but what it does do, it does do very well. And then we exit out. We've got our photo gallery here of all our on-ride photos. And then you can see more of the water and the monster. As you can see, as said on-ride, there's like a layer of purple beneath the water, which makes the water look purple, which is just, it's so well thought of. And yeah, so there we go. Congratulations, Dan Thorpe, on uh, winning the Alton Towers Coaster Challenge. This coaster is incredible, if I haven't said it enough already. And it just, ever since I first opened it up, I was wowed by it. So, good job. And yeah, that marks the end of the Alton Towers Coaster Challenge. Again, congratulations to Dan Thorpe for winning. And uh, thank you so much to everyone who sent in their submissions. If you'd like to see another one, lay it down the line, leave a like, and uh, thanks for watching.